What's up everyone, welcome back to Lace Up Channel. My name is Mickey. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the five most difficult things to do in a WMS system. Now, what I mean by most difficult, many distributors who I speak to want to automate a bevy of operations within their business. Namely, they want to automate production, they want to automate catch weights, they want to automate lot traceability and projections and all these things with the push of a button, boom, for $3 they're gonna pay me and all of a sudden their entire business is automated. But the truth of the matter is getting a WMS in place that actually does these things is not only costly for you, but very difficult for me to do. So in this video, we're going to talk about the five things that you need to keep an eye out for um, when getting a proposal or when getting a quote from a WMS uh, supplier like myself so that you understand that these are the things that are going to stack on the cost and exponentially double or triple your implementation. Anyways, let's get right into it. Number one, catch weights. That's right, catch weights are perhaps some of the most difficult things to track in all of WMS. Now, what is a catch weight? A catch weight is when you receive a good and that good has a corresponding weight and you sell that good by the pound. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you receive a case of poultry. That case of poultry weighs 3.54 pounds. Now, when you receive that case of poultry, if your vendor is sophisticated, they'll have a little label on the case that has the weight, the lot number, and the expiration. Pretty straightforward. Now, when you receive that good, you've got to inventory that case at 3.54 pounds. So what does that mean? That means that your WMS system, a system implemented by someone such as myself, has to be able to tell you what cases are in inventory and what their corresponding weights are. Now, the reason why this is hard is because most systems are accustomed to tracking inventory by only one parameter. So normally you either track it by quantity, by pound, by lot number, by expiration. Um, but the truth of the matter is when you have catch weights, you need to track the inventory by both quantity and pound. So you need to know how many cases you have on hand, but also what are the corresponding weights of those cases. And that's not the kicker. The kicker, even though that seems difficult, <laughs> is the fact that when you do catch weighted items, you have to also be able to print labels from your WMS system to label any cases that weren't labeled initially. And you need to be able to break down a case of 3.54 pounds into individual chicken breasts, for instance. So many of my distributors, they have a case of you know, catch weight uh, sirloin steaks. And each of the sirloin steaks come individually packaged within the case. Then the customer breaks the case, takes out the sirloin steak, labels that sirloin steak, and sells an individual sirloin steak to a customer. Now, the reason why that's hard is because you receive the case and the poundage for that case. But if you remove the sirloin, that means that now the weight of the original case has changed. So at this juncture, you know, you're probably like, oh my goodness, yes, that's a lot. Well, uh, yeah, Johnny, it's a lot of shit. <laughs> the point is, it's, it's extremely hard to do catch weights. So if you want to track all of your catch weights to break cases down to each is to know exactly what cases and what corresponding weights your inventory, expect to pay more for your WMS system. The next thing that's extremely difficult to do in a WMS is raw material tracking and production. So I get a bunch of distributors that think that production and raw material tracking is easy. They want it automated. They want to be able to know exactly how much of a sack of rice did they use or did they consume in the production of this finished good. Well, Johnny, that's one of the hardest things to do because in a raw material environment, I've actually got to receive in the raw materials. And even if the raw material isn't by catch weight, right? Let's say you receive a sack of a raw material that weighs 30 pounds. Each and every single one of those sacks must be labeled with a label that say that it's 30 pounds. Now, why do you ask? Well, when you trigger a production order, a work order, a, a batch, however you ca uh, call it in your process, um, the batch is going to prompt you to pick that sack but almost never does it tell you to take the 30 pounds in their entirety, right? It'll say, hey, we're gonna make a batch of X product and you need three pounds. Well, the sack is a 30 pound sack. So you've gotta go into the sack, 
remove the three pounds, reweigh the sack, and store the remaining weight associated to that specific sack. Whoa, that was a tongue twister. Point being, when you have a raw material that's weighted where you remove um, little by little by little, that means that the weight for that raw material needs to be tracked over time all the way until the raw material is consumed and exhausted. So that's why tracking raw materials is so hard. The warehouse management system has to be able to scan that raw material into production, take the weight out, then scan the raw material again, deducting the weight that was removed and putting the raw material back into its bin location to be used and used and used until it's fully consumed. That's very hard. Then, once we go into production after the raw material has been picked and the remaining raw material has either been staged back in the production area or back into its bin, um, we now have to do the production process. So in the production process, you actually have all of these products that come together into a room. Um, they're, they're put into mixers, whatever the process is. And at the end of that production process, you have a finished good. So you take raw materials, they go into your production process, out the production process comes your finished good. Along that entire process, you've got losses in, in productivity from your staff, meaning they drop a raw material on the ground. Or during your production process, you have a drop in your yield for X or Y reasons, whether it's the temperature in the room or a change to one of your machines. Um, a good system uh, needs to be able to track that production process and give you the yield. So I'm sorry to digress about production, but as you can tell, it's extremely difficult to track raw materials through a production process to a finished good while tracking all the quantities left over in raw materials and all of your yield at the end of the production process to see just how much you've lost. So yes, that's hard. And if you want to do that, that's probably the most expensive thing to do in a WMS system. So the next thing I want to talk about is lot numbers and FIFO, first in, first out. We've talked about this multiple times on the channel, but um, I think it's important to note that this is one of the hardest things to do in your warehouse because it's going to require a paradigm shift in you and your staff in order to get it done. Now, what do I mean? For any of those of you that are currently tracking lot numbers or expirations, you're probably using a loose tracking methodology, meaning that you're okay as long as you know what product and what lots go into your picking bin and then exit from the picking bin onto an order, onto a, a transfer of some kind. Now, the issue with having this loose methodology is that oftentimes you mix in a picking bin the same item with multiple lots or multiple expiration dates. And here's where things get convoluted and complex. When you implement a system, in order for me to guarantee that you send a corresponding lot to a customer, I have to force your staff, your system to only put one product, one lot number, and one expiration date per bin. This is so that your picking staff, when picking from a bin, if they're prompted to pick lot A, they don't accidentally pick lot B. Now, the entire mechanism and process that needs to be put in place that ensures that lot A will end up on its own in that picking bin is super difficult. So yes, doing FIFO and expiration dates, really, really, really hard. The next thing I want to talk about is replenishments or transfer orders. Now, most distributors have multiple warehouses in the area or across the country. And often those warehouses are interoperable, meaning that they, they transfer product from one to the other to fulfill sales orders. Now, the issue with having this is that you need to have a system that's smart enough to know when it's time to transfer from one warehouse to the other and when it's time to actually purchase product from a vendor. So let me get into the mechanics of this just a bit. Let's say, for instance, um, you're in warehouse one. Okay. And you've got item X, item X has 100 on hand. And all of a sudden you have an order come in that requires 90. Well, in a WMS system, you should be able to set a minimum and a maximum, meaning that a minimum is where your threshold of availability needs to hit before the system triggers a replenishment. So for argument's sake, let's say that your minimum is 10 and that your maximum is 200. Okay. So you just had the order that, that brought your available from hundred to 10. Now, Minimum's triggered and the system goes, okay, my maximum's 200. I need to order 190 because 190 plus the remaining 10 equals the 200. 
So, so far so good. The next thing a system will do is it'll search all of your warehouses for that available stock. And if you have those 190 in another location, it needs to prompt a transfer order. It needs to say, hey Johnny, here's a transfer order. We need 190 from this warehouse to yours. Somebody has to hit approve. That has to go to that warehouse. So it could be picked, packed and shipped to you. Pretty straightforward, right? But the mechanics of having those auto replenishments trigger based on those minimums, filling you up to the maximum is actually difficult to implement. So that's another thing that, that's extremely hard to do. And a good segue, I think, into the last thing. Um, and perhaps the most important thing in any WMS is purchasing. Purchasing, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, purchasing from your vendors, um, putting in POs at the right time so that product gets there at the right time so that you don't lose sales, so that product doesn't expire, and so that your inventory flows just enough so that it doesn't occupy all your funds and a bunch of inventory that's not rotating. So when it comes to purchasing, any decent or average WMS is gonna tell you, based on your sales velocity, based on how much product is rotating out of your warehouse, okay? Using a moving average, you are going to calculate and compute what you need in order to have an inventory so that given a sufficient lead time, you won't run out until the next shipment of that inventory comes in. So let me give an example, and I hate getting this technical on a video like this, so I'm gonna try to simplify this a bit. Let's say that you sell one banana per week. Let's keep it simple. Let's say that it takes three weeks for your vendor to bring you bananas. That means at minimum, you need to have three bananas on hand at all times, right? But normally what you wanna do is you wanna provide yourself a buffer of about 20% of that product. So let's say you're moving one banana per week. Um, when you put in a PO, let's say you've got three bananas today, your vendor takes three weeks, okay? That means that after three weeks, you're gonna de um, deplete those bananas down to zero, at which point three bananas more are gonna come from the vendor and it's gonna be three and you're gonna enter this cycle of three. The issue is that if your sales spike for any reason, um, you'll sell through the three bananas in those three weeks, but then you'll be out of bananas for a week or two, which means that you won't be able to supply the demand. Now, this is where projections come in in respect to your purchasing. When you project out your purchasing, you know that your sales are trending upwards and that you should put a buffer on the banana purchases so that instead of ordering three over a three week period, you order five or seven or eight, depending on how much your moving averages are. Now these projections that a simple WMS does is basically a sales value moving average using a weekly moving average that's responsive or hyper responsive to, to moments at which that sale starts uh, trending upwards or downwards. And um, you wanna be able to build in the lead time into this formula and you wanna be able to build in um, the expiration dates of the products into this formula so that the system outputs a projected purchase order or a report that tells you exactly what to purchase from each vendor. Now at this juncture, you know, you're probably like, oh, Mickey, you talk so much. <laughs> you know, I feel like that too. Sometimes I feel like I talk too much, but the point is, is that I just wanted to walk you through five of the hardest things to do in a WMS. And in my experience, I've never once met a customer with any system that's actually gone through this process and implemented it themselves. Normally you need an implementer who's very knowledgeable, technical, who can fulfill your needs and take you from beginning to end. And without that, I almost think it's impossible to, to take a system like this, unless you're super sophisticated, but if you are, you're probably not sitting there implementing systems <laughs> in a warehouse. You're probably um, doing something more technical. So you either need someone super technically sophisticated to implement one of these systems, or you need to compensate someone like myself or an implementer of some kind to do it for you. So guys, I hope now that you understand just how difficult these five things are to implement in a WMS. And if you're gonna go for a WMS, keep these things in mind because obviously the more you add, the higher the cost will be. Um, if you guys enjoyed that video, if you didn't, if I just rambled on whatever, let me know down below. Give me a little comment, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. Uh, yeah, Lace up's gonna keep popping out content like this every single week and I hope to see you next video. Take care. Thank you.